It is time for the final video of 2018. It's been a great year with lots of content, but I figured I'd end this year out with a review of Guilty Gear, a game that some of you have wanted me to review for the last handful of years. Guilty Gear was developed by Team Neo Blood and published by Atlas Software. It was released on the PlayStation in 1998. Now, Team Neo Blood is actually a Arc Systems Works company. It was a production group led by Daisuke Ishiwatari, the designer and producer of Guilty Gear. This is the first game of a well known 2D fighting game series. Now, of course, Guilty Gear consists of 1v1 fights with a six-button layout that features special moves and instant kills, which you will see a few times throughout this video, I am sure. Either me doing it, surprisingly, or the opponent kicking my ass. Now, a little backstory of Guilty Gear. The game took a year and a half in production, and of course, it's going up against Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, King of Fighters when it comes to 2D fighting games. There are ten playable characters with a variety of styles ranging from fighting, specials, abilities, weapons, and more. Not only that, you can unlock three hidden characters that can only be used in versus mode. Pretty much their boss characters. If you're wondering who the characters are, there's Axel Lowe, Chip Zanuff, Dr. Baldhead, Cliff Underson, Kai Kisk, May, Malaya Rage, Potekman, Soul Bad Guy, and Zato One. Then there is Baikin, Justice, and Testament as boss characters. Now, some of these characters have heavy metal or hard rock influences, such as Axel is named after Axel Rose, vocalist of Guns N' Roses. The second half of the character name has been said originated from the Testament album Low. Chip Zanuff is named after the bassist Chip Zanuff from the band Enough Zanuff, although his physical appearance and backstory is based on Billy Idol. Kai Kisk is reference to German power metal musician Michael Kisk and Kai Hansen, who are musicians in the power metal band Halloween. Malaya Rage got her name from the thrash metal band from the 80s, Malaya Rage. Also, her instant kill is named Iron Maiden. You can probably guess what that reference is to. Not only that, one of her overdrives is Winger, based on the band featuring Kip Winger, that nobody really gives a shit about. It's really cool to see the heavy metal and hard rock references in this game, and funny enough, it has been said that the people that have worked on this, including Ishiwatari, are huge fans of hard rock and heavy metal. Now, when it comes to the story behind the game, it takes place in the year 2880, five years after the end of the Crusades. A gear named Testament begins a plan to resurrect justice and wipe out the human race. And when I mean by wiping them out, I mean it's like wiping your own ass after a greasy shit. The Union of Nations organizes a fighting tournament as they are in fear of Testament's plan. I mean, I'd be in fear of Testament as well. They're a pretty great thrash metal band, which, funny enough, Testament is pretty much influenced by the thrash metal band Testament. You will fight in a tournament to see who will be able to defeat Testament. Good luck. Hopefully you're Exodus. Which, hey, that would have been really cool. Put a character named Exodus in this game. Exodus vs. Testament. Exodus is a better band. Until after they got rid of Zetro and they brought in dipshit Rob Dukes. I'm glad they got rid of that cocksucker. There are three modes. Arcade, Versus, and Training. Obviously you know that Arcade mode is the single player where you play through the game and fight the bosses and so on. Versus mode is where you can play against a friend in multiplayer. And Training mode is where you can practice so you can learn how to beat the shit out of your opponent. Like other fighting games, you need to win two rounds or two of the three rounds. If you win one, they win one, then you have a third one that you have to fight and win. There is a tension gauge that fills up when you get hit or take damage. When it's full, you become stronger and you can do special moves called chaos attacks. When you do this, a red aurora will surround you and that allows you to perform unlimited chaos attacks. Like I mentioned earlier, there's instant kills. If you successfully land one of these, it doesn't matter what round you are in, the match is over. Of course, you need to watch out because your opponent can do the same, so you just need to kick their ass before they even get a chance of doing a instant kill. The graphics for Guilty Gear are pretty damn good. The characters are well designed, very colorful, it has their own look obviously, and the character sprites are quite large, the weapons are nice, the stage designs are nice as well. A lot of detail in this game, which is great. The game is very colorful in general. Funny enough, it has been said that this game was originally going to be designed and rendered in 3D, but it was replaced by hand-drawn artwork, which is probably for the better. I think in the mid to late 90s and early 2000s, pulling off a 3D rendered fighting game was a bit tough. Some games did okay, some didn't. The game doesn't glitch, slow down, or anything like that, which is very nice. No complaints at all when it comes to the graphics. When it comes to the music, I fucking love it. It has a nice mixture of hard rock and heavy metal. It was composed by Takahiro Yumatsu, Katsuaki Takami, Takua Moritu, and it was arranged by Yashiro Takanashi. And they fucking nailed it. Great guitar work, great guitar solos, and you know what? You can buy this soundtrack as it was released in Japan. It features several themes and so on, which 
which is great. The sound effects are good as well. Really no complaints other than that some of the sound effects are louder than others with certain characters like Axel's chains. It really stands out more. Sometimes they can be a little bit annoying, but that is a very, very, very small flaw. The voiceover work in the game is great. Really nothing I can say bad or anything like that it fits the game perfectly. Now let's talk about the controls. Well, it's no secret I suck at fighting games. I button mash 95% of the time, and I think the game handles that very well, actually. Moving around, jumping, and attacking is very easy and responds quite well. Hell, I just bashed a bunch of buttons, and boom! There was times I did an instant kill, which was pretty fucking cool. Either way, I like the controls. I don't really notice any slowdown, which is very nice, especially in the fighting game genre where it can be very fast-paced. Guilty Gear on the PlayStation is a kick-ass start to the series. The gameplay is fun, the graphics are great, the music fucking kills, the sound effects are alright, the voiceover work is awesome, the controls are pretty simple and easy to understand. Not only that, they respond very well. Really, you shouldn't have any issues with this game, other than maybe you suck at fighting games. And also, I don't find the game to be difficult either. Some say its biggest flaw is that it's unbalanced and too difficult, but I don't see it. I've gone quite far in this game with almost every character, and if I died, it's usually my own fuck-up. I do wish there were more than 10 characters in the arcade mode, maybe 12 to 15, but it's a very small flaw. Guilty Gear is fucking great, and if you haven't played it, go play it right now. If you want a copy for the PlayStation, the game is 80% rare, so good luck finding the fucker. But on eBay, the prices are quite expensive. A complete in box is $69.95, $27.99 for a disc only, $57.99, $89.95, $49.93, and a lot of prices in between. If you can find it for under $50 and in good condition, that isn't too bad. Hell, if you just want to play the fucking game, just get a disc only. Of course, the game was released on the PlayStation 3, and I'm sure you can still pick it up there. And apparently it's supposed to get re-released on all modern consoles and PC for the 20th anniversary. But there really hasn't been much said about that, and I haven't found anything else about it. Of course, if you know how to use PlayStation emulation, you can play it there as well. When it comes to sequels, there's quite a few on a variety of consoles and even on PC. There's Guilty Gear X, Guilty Gear X2, Guilty Gear 2 Overture, Guilty Gear XRD Sign, and Guilty Gear XRD Revelator. That's the main series. Then there's the up versions of Guilty Gear X and so on. Then, of course, there's spin-offs like Guilty Gear Pettit, Guilty Gear Pettit 2, which are on the Wonder Swan, and then Guilty Gear Isuka, Guilty Gear Dust Strikers, Guilty Gear Judgment, and I think that's it. The newest game in the series is actually DLC for Guilty Gear XRD Revelator, called Rev 2, which can be found on the PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, and PC. This was released in 2017. Hopefully later on, either in 2019 or 2020, we can get a new Guilty Gear game. I think that would be really fucking cool. Well, that is it for this review of Guilty Gear. I hope you guys enjoyed it. What a fucking great year it has been for this channel. I hit some milestones and just very happy for everyone that stops by and watch, subscribe, and everything else. I really do appreciate it. Now, after this video, I'm going on a bit of a break, taking some time away from YouTube. Not very long. Right now, my plan is to come back on the 21st of January, but this will give me time to relax a bit, maybe work ahead on upcoming reviews, plan what I want to do, and so on for 2019. Now, of course, that might extend to the first week of February, but who knows? I'm almost 95% sure I'm coming back the 21st. I do want to wish everyone a happy new year. Be safe tonight as it's New Year's Eve. Enjoy ringing in 2019. Don't get yourself arrested or killed. And once again, thank you for your continued support. Whether it's coming to the live streams, watching these reviews, watching Let's Plays, the podcast, the Metal World Order. If you're just here for the Metal World Order, thank you so fucking much. You guys kick fucking ass. And I will see you back here at the end of January.